Hi there and welcome back. Uh, so in the previous videos we started talking about branch points and in particular uh, we also discussed how there could be two kinds of branch points an algebraic and a logarithmic branch point uh, whereby uh, for a logarithmic branch point let's say a function has a logarithmic branch point then uh, no matter how many times we uh, how many loops we make around that branch point in the z-plane um, uh, we never come back to the point where we started off in the w plane and uh, one of the examples where this happens is actually the argument uh, of a complex number the argument function of a complex number so let's just sort of uh, remind ourselves what that is and uh, in particular in how it relates to our discussion of branch points um, so let's say uh, this is our, um, our z plane uh, with the x-axis, uh, uh, with, the, with the real axis labeled with the symbol x and the imaginary axis labeled with the symbol y and, and there's some point z in the complex plane then uh, if we have to depict the point z using its polar notation uh, it has a, a, a magnitude and a phase or uh, an argument theta or let's just call it theta naught so, so theta naught is the angle that the vector from the origin to the point z uh, makes with the uh, x-axis and the length of the vector is the uh, amplitude or magnitude which is r and this angle is theta naught and uh, this is what we define as the argument of the function z which is uh, this particular phase or angle that it makes theta naught now notice one thing that um, if theta naught is an argument of the complex number z then it's equally uh, we are equally well justified to say that okay uh, if theta naught is an argument then so is theta naught plus or minus 2 pi or theta naught plus or minus 4 pi or any other uh, integral multiple of 2 pi added to theta naught and that's because if we sort of move around a loop and come back to the point having increased our phase by an amount of 2 pi we're back at the same point z and therefore the argument of the complex number z is actually theta naught plus some integral multiple of 2 pi uh, where the integral multiple is specified by uh, the symbol n where n could take any value from 0, plus minus 1, plus minus 2, and any, any, any uh, all the way up to infinity. Uh, so, so, so the argument of a function in, in, um, um, has this inherent multi-valued nature to it, uh, whereby uh, you can move around and come back to the same point z. Uh, if you move around the origin once, you, you increase your phase by 2 pi. If you move in the counterclockwise direction, if you move in the clockwise direction, your phase changes by minus 2 pi, but then you're back at the same point z. Um, let's just think of this idea a little bit more in terms of how, uh, if, if you think of the argument as a function that takes us from the z-plane to the w-plane and then what's happening in the w-plane. So, um, so again, uh, we have this point z and let's just cook up a function <coughs> w which is argument of z uh, plus i times 0. So what this means is that the function w which uh, we typically write as u plus iv has real part which is the argument and imaginary part which is zero and then we draw the w plane um, so we have the u axis here and the v axis here <clears throat> so let's say we begin at the point theta naught and maybe theta naught is here and then we make a, a, a we move in a circle or we could just have made a, we could have made any other loop and we so we move around uh, the origin once and we're back at the same point c now what's happening, what, what is the path that, uh, what, what, is the, what is the image of this particular loop that we've taken in the w plane, so this is the w plane. Uh, now notice w is argument of z plus i0. So the argument of z, we started off at theta naught. By the time we move around the origin once and we're back at the point z, uh, the argument has gone in this direction and has increased by 2 pi. So the argument is now theta naught plus 2 pi. <coughs> Okay, so beginning with theta naught, uh, we have moved around, we, we have moved along the x-axis and now we are at theta naught plus 2 pi. Now what if we make another loop? <coughs> we wind around once more and we are back at the point z. Then we move from here <coughs> and then we arrive at the point theta naught plus 4 pi. 4 pi, right? Now if we continue, keep repeating this process, moving in the same direction or in the same sense which is counterclockwise for this particular example then you'll notice that if we begin at theta naught then we'll continuously move away from this point along the real axis uh, in a way that we never actually come back to the point theta naught 
So as we keep sort of, uh, and sometimes this process of moving or making a loop around the origin and coming back to the same point is called winding around the origin, just like a clock winds around uh, starting at some point and winds around and comes back to where it started. Uh, sometimes this process is called winding around the origin. So if you keep winding around the origin, you see that on the uh, in, in the in the image plane, which is the W plane, if you begin at theta, we'll, con we'll continuously keep moving away from that point and never actually come back to the point. And this ties in with our discussion of logarithmic branch points, wherein um, if we have a logarithmic branch point and if we sort of wind around that branch point, uh, no matter how many times we wind around the branch point, we never actually come back to the point in the W plane where we started off with. And so here we have a branch point at the origin and it's kind of like a logarithmic branch point. We have just scooped up this function, but it turns out that actually the argument z uh, forms an integral part of uh, a very important function, which is the logarithmic function. Uh, and, and in that case, uh, the multi-valued nature of the logarithmic function actually follows from very similar logic to what we've been talking about. So, so this is uh, how uh, a logarithmic branch point behaves. Um, now, what is the way out of this? Uh, if the argument of a function is inherently multi-valued, then how do we deal with uh, angles, uh, angle theta, and how do we specify a unique and uh, distinct value of theta so that we can work with it? For, for let's say we want to solve a problem, then we want to fix a value of theta so that we are consistent in our choice. And, and we already know how we deal with it uh, when, when we talk when 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 we have we, we learned about trigonometric functions, for instance. Um, and typically, what we do is we restrict uh, the values that theta can take within a half open interval of length 2 pi. So, uh, so what you do is you restrict uh, theta to some half open interval <coughs> of length 2 pi. Uh, for example, you could say that we restrict theta to between 2 pi and 0. So it's half open because you're allowed theta equals 0, but not theta equals 2 pi. So, you sh you, so you're allowed just values which are just short of 2 pi. Uh, and, 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 and another choice is that you, can, you, can, you could have theta ranging from, uh, let's say, uh, minus pi to uh, greater than or equal to minus pi and less than greater than minus pi and less than or equal to pi. Uh, that's another choice that's typically made. And in fact, this is a very common choice such that this is uh, sometimes called the principal value range of the angle theta, um, especially when we're talking about trigonometric functions. Uh, before we, 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 when we've talked about trigonometric functions before, we, we call this the principal value range of theta. Um, and in the same way, a very similar idea follows for any kind of uh, multi-value, dealing with any kind of multi-value function, be it algebraic or logarithmic, which is to choose some range uh, such that the function takes a unique and definite value. Once you've made this choice, uh, what we say is that we've chosen a single branch of the function, of the multi-value function. Uh, and a single branch means within that branch, the value that the function takes is unique and definite. So the multi-valued nature, so this is a way of extracting ordinary functions from multi-valued function. If I'm making a choice uh, by restricting the values that the function can take, you make a choice. For instance, in this case, we make a choice that theta is uh, restricted to a half open interval of length 2 pi. And then in the process, we have chosen one branch of the function wherein it behaves like an ordinary function because now it has a unique and definite value. And one of the ways for depicting this, uh, this sort of making this choice is, uh, so let's, let's, let's pick up this example for instance. What we can do is, we go back to the z-plane, and the, the idea behind this is again, that we don't want theta to increase by 2 pi, because that is what gives rise to the multi-valued nature. So what we'll do is, we'll make a special line. So for instance, if, if you're making this particular choice, we can make a line like this. Uh, which say goes from minus pi plus epsilon uh, from zero to all the way to infinity, or a very long line uh, at an angle minus pi plus epsilon. And then what this range tells us is that we are allowed to go from zero, theta equals zero to pi, and then from minus pi to epsilon to zero. We are not allowed the value minus pi because it's in half open interval. 
and this kind of a line that we make to, to, to sort of enforce this choice of choosing a particular branch of a function is called a branch cut. Okay, so in this particular choice, we've chosen the principal valued branch of the argument function. And, um, and there is no rule, definite rule of where you want to draw this line. As long as you've made a choice for, uh, for, uh, for a half open interval of length 2pi, it's, it's a good enough choice for a branch cut. So a branch cut could happen here, you can draw a branch cut here, you can draw a branch cut here, anywhere you want. It need not be a straight line, you can draw a branch cut like this, uh, it could be some wavy line like this. As long as you, you're, the, the, the line or the curve uh, enforces uh, you to not uh, not allow theta to increase by 2 pi. As long as you, you can enforce that, that's a very good choice for a branch cut. Uh, so, so for instance here, theta is pi, and then right below the branch cut, theta is minus pi plus epsilon, and then you can go all the way from minus pi plus epsilon to zero. Now notice that the branch cut is actually a line of discontinuities. It's, it's a line that you have introduced in the complex plane, and it's a line of discontinuities. Why is it a line of discontinuity? It's because the value of the argument right above the branch cut, for instance, in this particular example, is theta equals pi. Whereas the value right below the branch cut is theta equals minus pi plus epsilon, where epsilon is some, some small parameter. And therefore, right across this, there is a jump, which is of magnitude 2 pi, up to, up to the small value epsilon, which you can tend to 0. So there is a jump of the, of the order of 2 pi. And no matter where you draw the branch cut, you would find that there's always a jump of the order of 2 pi uh, in the value of the function across the branch cut. So for instance here, it's pi, and right below, it's minus pi. So there's a jump of 2 pi. So sometimes a branch is also called, called a line of discontinuities. And notice, this is really an artificial cut that you have introduced in the, in the complex plane. Theta doesn't care. It could have just gone on increasing from 0 to 2 pi to 4 pi to 6 pi to, to any, any value. It's just that you have introduced this line, uh, just like people draw boundaries between people and countries to, to identify borders. So you've drawn this line and enforced uh, choosing a single valued branch of a function. Uh, and exactly these kinds of ideas will, we will we'll work out with other examples uh, whenever we want to work with multi-valued functions. Um, but I hope sort of this uh, discussion uh, in sort of, uh, is, um, was useful uh, uh, talk, uh, in, in terms of, for instance, distinguishing uh, an algebraic branch point for a logarithmic branch point. And then, uh, more generally, how do we deal with multivalued functions? How do we come up with uh, what was just the idea of a branch curve? How do we, and how does that help us choose single valued branches of the function? Uh, in the context of an example, which is the argument function, which is something that's quite familiar with us, and we implicitly sort of make these kinds of choices when we're dealing with trigonometric functions, for instance. Um, so yeah, let's hope, um, let, uh, let's uh, continue with these, uh, some of these ideas and talk more about these in future videos. So um, hope to see you soon, and thanks for watching.